Hi, my name is George Garcia with Fusion 360. In this video, we're going to show you how you can make a footprint from scratch in an electronics library. So in our last video, we made a symbol, and now we're going to go to the next step, which is make a footprint. Now, I do want to highlight that these steps are in, in a strict order. You could make the footprint first and then the symbol. The thing that has to be at the end is the creation of the device. But before then, you can do the others in any order you feel comfortable with. So I'm going to click here on create new footprint. Again, just want to highlight we have the import option so you can reuse existing footprints. And again, most of the time that's what you're going to do. But for the purposes of this demo, we're going to create a new one from scratch. Okay, and for this one, we're going to create an SO8. So I hit OK. And now you'll see we are inside the footprint editor. Now a couple of things to note here. The grid is not as critical here. You can change the grid to whatever is convenient in order to be able to draw the footprint as easy as possible. Now, we still do recommend that you center the footprint about the origin because, again, the origin becomes the handle in the PCB editor. So the component we're going to make today is an LM833. If you want to look up the data sheet, you can look in page 28 and 29. That's where the geometry is. And I'm just going to bring it up for one second so you can see it. Okay. Now I want to highlight that there isn't a standardized formula for how the data sheets should be formatted or what data they should contain. So there is a lot of variation here. Now in this case, Texas Instrument has done a really nice job when it comes to specifying the dimensions because as you can see here, they've centered the component around the origin and all the dimensions are relative to center. So that's going to make things a lot easier for us. So let's go ahead and go back to Fusion Electronics and let's get started. Now you're going to notice the commands are very similar to the symbol editor, but we have two unique ones here. We have a through hole pad command and we have a surface mount pad command. Now the SOIC that we're working with is a surface mount component. So we're going to go ahead and click the SMD pad. Now, if we look at the data sheet, which uh, again, you can look up on your own, um, we see that the pads need to have the dimensions of 61 mils long by 24 mils wide. If you look here in the size, we have 50 by 25. Now, you could click to find uh, one of the default options, or what you're probably doing more often than not is typing in the dimensions you need. So, 61 mils by 24 mils. So 24, press enter. It's very important that you press enter, otherwise it doesn't change. Okay, now if we look at the data sheet, the separation between these is 50 mils. So that's very convenient, that's the grid we have by default. But because it's centered around the origin, we may have a need for a half grid. So I'm just going to go to the grid settings down here and make sure that I have a half grid alternate. Now you can invoke the alternate grid by just holding the Alt key. So I'm just going to make this 25. Okay. And if you, we want, since SMDs are normally in metric units, I'm going to switch these to be metric. Okay. I'm say okay. Now again, absolute distance hasn't changed. I just changed the units to metric and I gave myself a half pitch alternate grid. Okay. So you can see it's hopping grid spaces. And to make that even clear, I'm going to turn on the grid. Again, normally you don't need to do that, but just so that visually it's clear, we're going to do that. Okay. So now, looking at the data sheet, I know I have to have four on one side and four on the other. So I'm going to use the alternate grid so that way I can just place the ones that I need right here. And they're going to be accurately located. Perfect. Okay, and now I have one side of the chip. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select them all. And I just want to be able to do a copy. So I activate the copy command, and then at the zero, zero point, I hit Control, and I right-click. Okay, when you do Control and right-click, you're applying the copy operation to the group.
If I didn't do that, it would apply to whatever I clicked on. By doing it at 0, 0, that becomes the reference point for the group. Okay? And that's going to be very important later when we try to space these out. So I'm going to hit Control, I hit right click, and you'll see I have the copy here. Okay? And for now, I'm just going to leave it right there at this point. It's not too important right now where it is. We're going to fix that in a second. So now, looking at the data sheet, I know that from the center line to one side is 2.7 millimeters. So I'm just going to bring it up real quick so you guys can see. You notice between both of them, it's 5.4. So from the center to one side, it's 2.7 millimeters. Okay? So you just divide it by 2. 5.4 divided by 2 gives you 2.7. So now I minimize. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this group here and I'm going to move it over 2.7 units. Now you could do that by changing the grid. That's one valid way of doing it. But I'm going to show you another way to do it which is more precise. So I'm going to go ahead and, again, form the selection just to make sure. I'm going to go to the command line. I'm going to type in the word move. Okay, I'm going to open parentheses. I'm going to put a greater than sign. Greater than sign basically represents a right click. Okay, and what this is going to do is it's going to help us select the group at 0, 0. Okay. Now, when it moves, it's basically going to translate everything relative to that point. So all I have to do to get it 2.7 millimeters to the left is for the other point here, I'm going to put negative 2.7 in the x dimension and then 0 in the y dimension. And now when I hit enter, you're going to see that it moved. And now if I check over here, whoops, if I check, you're going to notice it's at 2.7. Okay? So now we're going to do something similar with this group. Okay? I've selected it. I'm going to control right click at this point, which is its origin, with the move command active. So I'll select. Okay, activate move, and now control right click here. I can bring it back to the zero zero. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, it's already selected, I'm going to go here to the command line. Now, if the command line is active, if you press the arrow keys, it'll show you the previously used command. So in this case, I already have the selections active but I want it to go 2.7 millimeters to the right. So I take that away, and I hit enter, and now it's at its correct location. And if we select, you'll see 2.7 is the thing that's common to all these pads. So, so far, so good. Now, what we're going to do is, the rest of the way, I'm going to freehand, but it's the same process. It's using the command line, it's using the grids to be able to locate the pads where they need to be. Now, if you're familiar with Fusion, you're probably used to a constraint solver and being able to put in dimensions. That's not available yet in Fusion 360 Electronics, but it's definitely something that's being worked on. So now, the next thing we need to add is a silkscreen outline to represent the component itself. And again, I'm going to approximate it. So I'm going to click here on Line. Now, anything related to the silk screen is going to be on the T-Place layer. So you're going to see that here, T-Place. And I'm just going to freehand it. Using the Alt command, I get an, this grid here. There we go. Now I do the same thing on this side. Okay, bring it over. There we are. And that's our basic silkscreen. The other thing we need to do is make sure 
that we have the order of the pads correct. As you can see right now, they're not in order as they would be in an actual component. So we're going to change that. Now you could do it using the inspector with the select command active. You could go and change it here. But one thing that I find is a little bit faster is to use a name command. So you click name, you click on the pad, you'll see its name. I want this to be one. One, hit enter. Now the name command stays active. So I select the next one, two, hit enter. As you can see, it's going to be a lot faster than using the inspector for this operation. So I'm going to go here, 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 and there we are. There's our last one. Okay. The other thing we need to add is, again, our name and value placeholders. Now, I've already shown you in the symbol video how to do that manually, but I'm going to show you a different way to do it here, which is a little bit faster. What you're going to do is you click Automate and you click here run UOP. Now UOPs are basically programs, user-made programs that ship with Fusion Electronics and can help automate some of these tasks. Now the one that we're interested in is called set name and value which is right here and what's nice about it is it will automatically place it on the correct layers which are different here in the footprint and it will write the text for you. So I'm going to click OK and you'll see that we have our text there. And now, if you look, I'm going to go back to the main menu. If I click on it, you're going to see it's in T names, top names. I can put it here. And then if we look at value, it's on T values, top values. Okay, when you're making a footprint, the general rule is you draw it as if the component was going to be placed on the top of the surface of the board. And all the layers that you'll use will start with a T. In the actual PCB, if you put anything on the bottom, Fusion Electronics already knows what layers to switch them to for everything to be correct. It'll switch them to B values, B names, etc. So this is all you need to do to be able to create the footprint. You need to be able to determine if your component has through-hole pads or surface mount pads. You then, using either the grid or the command line, place these pads in their exact locations and then using either the grid or the command line you can draw out the silk screen you can draw out any additional features that need to be added to the component so thank you very much for watching in the next video we're going to show you how you can make a 3d package